It's time for me to teach you a really important lesson on how to focus through the viewfinder of your camera. This is the optical focusing systems. Now, in a later lesson, we'll be talking about live view, and live view also includes a way how to use the back monitor to pre-compose and focus your shots. That's a completely different set of skills that you'll have to learn. Looking and focusing through the viewfinder is a traditional classic method that all photographers should know. Now, having said that, beginners are often intimidated with the optical focusing systems because we'll be talking about three focusing modes, 39 focusing squares, and six focusing clusters in terms of the actual focus squares themselves. There's a lot easy to get confused on this. What I would recommend is just now watch it through one time and then go get your camera and follow along a second time. If you need to go through it a third time, it's gonna be worth it because you're going to be using these skills for the life of your camera. In order to simplify things, I've broken this down into the how the camera focuses and the where the camera focuses. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the how, and this is also the autofocus modes. To access your autofocus modes, what we're going to do is if you have your information panel on the back of your camera, we're going to push the I button and we'll get this yellow highlight. We're going to move to the focus mode selector, which is the second from the far left on the bottom. And when you press OK, it's going to take you into a menu and you're going to see four different focus modes. Now the good thing about this is there's really only two focus modes and the camera can switch on or off how it's using either of them. The first one you should know about is AFS, which stands for Auto Focus Single. And what this means is, is that when you push that shutter button halfway down and hold it, the camera is going to get a focus lock and it is going to stay fixed on that position as long as your index finger is pushing that shutter button halfway down. So even if you move the camera around, the focal distance will not change. This is ideal for shooting portraits, non-moving subjects like landscapes, anything that is not moving. Now the focus indicator you should be aware of is in your viewfinder. It's going to be in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So when you take your finger and push the shutter button halfway down, if you get a focus lock, you should notice this green circle lighting up and it's just off to the left of the shutter speed. That means the camera thinks the subject is in focus. Now there's another mode that we can see in this menu called AFC, which stands for Auto Focus Continuous. And what this means is that when you push the shutter button halfway down and you hold it halfway down, the camera is going to refocus over and over again if your subject moves or if you move or the camera moves. And this is more ideal for shooting sports, maybe uh, wildlife that's moving, cars, small children that run around like little bunch of crazy little kids. Moving subjects is what you are going to use AFC for. Now we have two other modes in here. We have AF. A, which stands for Auto Focus Automatic. If you're a pure beginner, or if you're not really comfortable with the camera yet, I would definitely recommend going with AFA. Because in this mode, we're giving the camera permission to bounce back and forth between the single and the continuous types of focus. Even when I'm shooting events such as weddings, to this very day, that is the mode I'm going to choose because we might have a bride who is walking and then she's stopping and then she's dancing and then she's stopping and I don't have time to you know fumble through the settings and change it back and forth. AFA is going to cover 75 to 80 percent of, of the shooting situations you're in and then if you know that you're going to be short shooting sports that's when I usually flip it over to autofocus continuous. Now there is a fourth autofocus mode in here and this is the manual focus mode, which is really only useful when your lens does not have a auto focus to manual switch. If you need to do manual focusing, you can put it on that mode. You're not going to see a lot of lenses that don't have that switch or times you're going to need it. So that is the how the camera focuses when we push the shutter button halfway down. It's either 
a one-time focus or it's a continual focus over and over again. Now let's talk about the where. And what I'd recommend right now is making sure that your camera's autofocus mode is on AFA. And I'll tell you why in just a second. If we press our I button again and we get this yellow highlight, we're going to select the next right item menu, which is called the AF area mode. This has to do with our focus squares. And so if we select it, press OK, we're going to see that we have six different, I call them clusters. It's how the groupings of the squares work together. The first and the most important one you should know is the single square. The single square allows us to look through the viewfinder, and I'd recommend doing this, and you'll notice that you have a single square, and when you push on your directional pad in any direction, you can move that square around and change the position or the location of where the camera is going to focus. This is really super important, especially when you are shooting portraits. Later on in the DVD, I have a special portrait crash course that will show you how to think and how to operate the camera as you're looking through the viewfinder. Now, I don't wanna get into it too much right now, but the idea of focusing, holding the shutter button down and moving the camera is called recomposing. It's a very important skill that you're going to have to learn where you can get something in focus, lock that focus, holding the shutter button halfway down, and moving the camera to recompose and make it more aesthetically pleasing. For the most part, I would say the majority of photographers are going to be using the single square most of the time. Now, another little tip I can give you about the single focus square type is that if you move your square to the far left or the far right, and it's way over here and you want to jump back to the center, just push the OK button and it'll jump right back to that center point. Now the next three focus uh, groups or clusters have to do with dynamic focusing. Essentially, when we're focusing on a subject that's moving and that subject uh, moves out of the focus range, the camera can use the surrounding focusing squares to re-attain this predictive focus. Otherwise, it's just going to look in that one little focus square. So D9 looks at the surrounding nine squares of your original focus point. D21 is a much bigger cluster. And D39 uses the entire set of focus points that we have. We have another very important focusing type called 3D focusing. This is new, it's cutting edge, and when it works, it is a great tool. Essentially the 3D tracking allows us to put a square on a moving subject and as that subject moves across the frame of the viewfinder the camera will actually change which focus points it's using. The last cluster is the auto area auto focus. Say that 10 times real fast. What this does is it tells the camera to find the closest subject to you and to focus on that. It's really for pure beginners who don't want to mess with their focus squares. Now, if you're a beginning or an intermediate photographer, the advice I'm going to give you is start off on the auto focus, auto focusing mode with your single square. Practice looking through the viewfinder, pushing on your directional pad and changing the location of where the camera is focusing and then practice pushing the shutter button halfway down and moving the camera to, to recompose the scene and make it more aesthetically pleasing. Again, in the portrait crash course, I'm going to show you a specific example, but if you can master that one technique from watching this video, you are years ahead of where I was. It took me about two or three years to really get the feel for that before I started shooting on a professional level. Learn it quick, get it over with. So that is your crash course to the how and the where the camera focuses. That's our autofocus modes and our autofocus squares. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in my new crash course for the Nikon D5300 or the Nikon D5200. I'll show you the basics and teach you how to shoot like a pro in no time. You can order them from the following link.